Welcome everybody. Uh, today I will talk about uh, neonatal parenteral nutrition and these uh, guidelines actually uh, were adapted from the neonatal parenteral nutrition uh, NICE guidelines published uh, in 26th of February 2020. The objectives of uh, this lecture are uh, to understand the or to know the indications for starting parenteral nutrition, the energy needs, uh, constituents, uh, how to monitor uh, parenteral nutrition, and when to stop parenteral, parenteral nutrition. Well, uh, according to these guidelines, uh, total parenteral nutrition is indicated for any preterm baby born uh, less than 31 weeks gestation, or for preterm babies born at or after 31 weeks we can uh, start uh, parenteral nutrition if sufficient progress is not made with enteral feeding in the first 72 hours after birth. The third indication, uh, we need to start parenteral nutrition for preterm and term babies who are unlikely to establish uh, sufficient enteral feeding, for example, babies with uh, congenital uh, gut disorders like uh, gastroschisis or omphalocele, or uh, if these babies have uh, a critical uh, illness uh, such as uh, sepsis. And the fourth indication, uh, enteral feeds have to be stopped and it is unlikely uh, they will be restarted within uh, 48 hours for preterm and for uh, within 72 hours for term babies. The first and most important part or aspect of the uh, uh, Parental nutrition is the energy supply or energy needs. If we are going to start uh, the total parental nutrition in the first four days of life, the recommendations are to give a starting uh, range of 40 to 60 kilocalories per kg per day. And we gradually increase, for example, over uh, four days to a maintenance range of 75 to 120 kilocalorie per kg per day. And if we are going to start uh, the parental nutrition after four days of birth, we will start immediately at a range of 75 to 120 kilocalorie per kg per day. Remember, this is the total energy needs. I include the three uh, major macromolecules which we will discuss in details later. For preterm and term babies who are on enteral feeds, in addition to uh, parenteral nutrition, we need to reduce the amount of energy that's given parenterally as enteral feeds increase. So the increment in enteral feeds indicates or necessitates the decrement to parenteral nutrition. We will start with the first constituent, which is glucose. Here, uh, for term and preterm babies, the guidelines are the same. If we start within the first uh, four days of life, we start at a dose of six to nine gram per kg per day. Then we increase gradually uh, to a maintenance of nine to 16 gram per kg per day. And if we start after the first, uh, first four days, we start at a dose of 9 to 16 gram per kg per day. For uh, amino acids, the, uh, there is uh, some little difference between preterm and term babies. We will take preterm babies first. Again, if we start within the first four days of life, we start at a dose of 1.5 to 2 grams per kg per day and increase gradually to a maximum of three to four grams per kg per day. Or if we start after four days, we give the maximum dose from the start, which is three to four grams per kg per day. While for preterm, for term babies, we start at one to two grams per kg per day, which is a little bit different from preterm babies. Then we gradually increase to a maintenance range of 2.5 to 3 grams per kg per day, and this is the maximum for uh, uh, -ter for term babies, which is 2.5 to 3 grams per kg per day. For lipids, uh, it's actually the same for term and preterm babies. 
starting in the first four days of life we will give one to two gram per kg per day we increase to uh, a maintenance range of three to four grams per kg per day and then we if we start at uh, uh, after four days of life we give uh, three to four grams per kg per day now it's important to know here that for preterm and term babies with parenteral nutrition associated liver disease we consider giving a composite lipid emulsion rather than a pure soy lipid emulsion now some would ask shall we decrease lipids in case of uh, tp and cholestasis or in case of sepsis these are debatable and no clear evidence on these issues there is some evidence that in babies with thrombocytopenia, for example, we may decrease the lipid into 2 grams per kg per day, although this is not 100% uh, sure. For amino acids, we may need also to decrease it in case of renal uh, acute kidney injury, but still this one is not sure and many neonatologists prefer to stay on the same doses. Because there is no clear consensus on these issues, the guidelines did not uh, uh, address these uh, issues in particular. Now we'll talk about the uh, energy ratios, how to distribute energy in order to give a uh, compatible and uh, proper uh, arrangement of these three macromolecules. The recommendation here is for every one gram of amino acids, we should give 20 to 30 kilocalorie of non-nitrogen uh, energy and this is divided into two parts the first part should be carbohydrate constituting 60 to 75 percent of this 20 to 30 kilocalorie and the second part is by lipids which constitute 25 to 40 percent of the non-nitrogen kilocalories now we'll come to calcium and phosphate. Calcium, if started within 48 hours, we start at 0.8 to 1 millimol per kg per day, and we increase up to 1.5 to 2 millimol per kg per day after 48 hours, which is the same starting dose if we start after 48 hours. For phosphate, we start by 1 millimol per kg per day and increase to a maintenance dose of 2 millimole per kg per day after 48 hours and this is again the starting dose if we start after 48 hours of age. We need to consider giving a higher dose of phosphate if indicated by the serum phosphate monitoring as we will see later and we have to consider giving a calcium to phosphate ratio of between uh, 0.75 to 1 and 1 to 1. What other constituents we have to consider? Vitamins. Vitamins should be given as uh, uh, both fat and water soluble vitamins from the start of giving the anti, uh, the TPN uh, should be given in the intravenous lipid emulsion to uh, improve their stability. For other electrolytes, we need to give sodium and potassium in the parental nutrition to maintain standard daily requirements adjusted as necessary for the individual baby. For magnesium, we give magnesium in uh, parental nutrition also from the start. And about trace elements, give daily intravenous trace elements ideally from the outset. Also, there's, uh, uh, there are some neonatologists who prefer uh, uh, to omit trace elements in case of liver disease. I could not find any evidence behind this. Now, how to monitor uh, parenteral, total parenteral nutrition in units? These are the uh, uh, components of our monitor that we have to consider. Blood glucose, blood pH, potassium chloride and calcium, serum triglyceride, serum phosphate, ion and uh, liver function. For uh, blood glucose, we need to check uh, uh, after one to two hours after starting and then after any change to the uh, glucose constituent. pH, potassium, chloride and calcium should be checked daily when starting 
and at increasing TBN. Once we reach a steady state, we can check it twice weekly. Serum triglycerides and serum phosphate are checked daily while increasing TBN, then weekly after reaching the maintenance. Iron status, uh, if we need to check it, we have to measure ferritin, iron, and transferrin saturation if a preterm baby is on parenteral nutrition for more than 28 days. For liver function, we have to check it weekly. Now, when to stop uh, total parenteral nutrition for babies uh, less than 28 weeks? We have to stop it within 24 hours once enteral feeding reaches 140 to 150 millimol, uh, sorry, ml per kg per day. And for babies at or more than 28 weeks, we have to stop uh, total parental nutrition within 24 hours once enteral feeding reaches 120 to 140 ml per kg per day. Thank you.